Hello and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good people of the tube. Hope you're today. Hope you're feeling grand. And all is by new world. Hello, there, everybody. Uh, welcome to the NQ Wednesday, everybody. Uh, it is at this point in time five past eight in the evening, which means it's another late one for me to be filming. But all is well. So uh, anyway, yes, let's dive into question one, shall we? Cause splosh. Okay, question one today is: uh, You mainly play guitar, but on the other side, are you playing video games uh, during your free time? Yes, sometimes. Not as much as I used to. I, I used to play computer games a lot more than I do now, but I still enjoy it. You know, I still really enjoy playing uh, certain games. Like, you know, well, we'll get to that in a minute because you, your your question goes in that direction. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do. I enjoy playing. I've always enjoyed computer games. Computer games have been, like, part of my life, like, ever. You know, I remember playing, like, um, Sonic and... and and uh, Donkey Kong and stuff like that on the Super Nintendo and stuff like that. And I've, I've still got my limited edition Donkey Kong yellow Game Boy, which is really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I do. I, I, mean, I enjoy it. So uh, you you also asked, which consoles do I have? Uh, I'm a PlayStation man, I'm afraid. I'm not an Xbox fan. I don't have controllers. Uh, so um, I have a PS1, PS2, PS3, and PS4. And I have an N64 as well. So, because N64, for Goldeneye, you know, you need Goldeneye. It's just one of those games. I do have a couple of other N64 games, but I never play. It's just Goldeneye. <laughs> it's the reason to own it. But yeah, so I've got the uh, PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, I will get the 5 when it comes down in price in a, in a year or so. I'm in no rush, but I will, I will get it at some point. Uh, but I've always been a PlayStation fan. I remember getting PlayStation 1 years and years ago and just loving it and just sticking to it. So you also asked, uh, what are your favourite games? Uh, my favourite games normally are kind of like survival horror games. Resident Evil, Silent Hill, they're my two favourite kind of like thingy games. Uh, I just love them. I, I, again, I grew up playing Resident Evil and Silent Hill. You know what I mean? They were the games I used to spend hours on. Especially Res the original Resident Evil 2 is probably the game I've played the most in my lifetime. And the Resident Evil remake of Resident Evil 2... Uh, is probably the second most because I, just, I played that basically for a year straight. You know, I, when Resident Evil 2 Remake came out, I basically played that for an entire year and I still play it now. Might go and play it in a bit actually. When I finish this video, I might go and uh, play it because I'm not going to edit this tonight because uh, it's late and I'm too tired. <laughs> so I'll edit it tomorrow. So I might go and play Resident Evil 2 or maybe Silent Hill. I don't know. But I like horror games. Uh, I do like horror games. Um,. I do have other games as well. Uh, I like certain games like Max Payne, but they're kind of dark. Like the the original Max Payne. Max Payne 2 wasn't as good, I don't think. Max Payne 1 is wicked, especially the nightmare sequences. They're horrific, but they're so, re so well done. Uh, and bullet time. What's not to love? Um, but I'll say I'm a big Resident Evil fan. I mean, I love Resident Evils. Uh, adore them. Silent Hill. I mean, I've got all Silent Hill uh, games. I even like the ones that weren't so looked upon favorably like downpour downpour didn't do very well but i really like it and the room the room gave me nightmares <laughs> the room was one of the silent hill the room was one of those games where i played it and had to take a break from it for a month or so before i could play it again it took such a long time to finish that game and it was just such a depressing game like it was just so dark and i was like oh my god it, but it was great you know it's great all at the same time but they're my favourite kind of games. I like horror games. I like mystery games and stuff like that. I, I, I enjoy those kind of things. But Resident Evil, Silent Hill. Can't go wrong. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So that's that. Uh, the last part of your question was, uh, coming back to guitar, uh, what bridge would you recommend that's closest to an original 1960s Strat and also what pickups are closest to an original 1960s Strat? So, what bridge? I mean, personally, I think you go. You, if you want a, and I kind of like a very close replica of an original nineteen sixties Fender Strat bridge or a sixties Strat, just in generic, uh, with pat pending saddles and the right tooling and whatnot. You want to go for the crazy parts uh, bridge. Uh, they're based in Germany, so you want crazy parts uh, in Germany. They do the closest reproduction. I have, I have a reproduction tremolo on my john frusciante oswald and my 62 strap um hmm there hair i felt like kind of like go into my mouth about five minutes ago and there it's just come out again Blech, gross anyway 
But yeah, so you want crazy parts, really. Crazy parts do a great reproduction tremolo unit that looks, sound, f and feels. Sound, yeah, I would say sounds, because it's got a steel block. So the crazy parts tremolo block is steel, and that does add a difference to your sound. It adds a more zingy kind of brightness to the tone. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I would say the closest one that I found is crazy parts. It looks right. Um, it's got the right kind of like markings and tooling and stuff like that. It's got a pat pending saddle. Um, and they look great. They look great. Like I said, I've got two. Um, I am going to get a third one, though. Uh, yeah, I am going to get a third one at some point. Uh, there's, a, there's a few bits I want to buy from Crazy Parts for the SD62. But, but, well, I'll talk about that in that video when I get to that. But, um, but yeah, so that's what I'd recommend for the tremolo. <laughs> uh, is the Crazy Parts bridge. It's amazing. Uh, Pickups-wise, I still think Tex-Mex pickups are the closest to an original... 60s strat pickup for me personally you know um uh but that's just me you know I, I did do a video a while back where i did a shootout between uh i can't remember what they were i think it was the seymour duncan ssls uh yeah i think i think they were in there i think i did a shootout between my 62 my white strat SSL ones and the Wilkinson pickups you get in vintage V6s. I'm pretty sure it was those four I did shoot out. And to me, the closest one was the White Strats pickups, my Mr. White. Uh, so they're Tex Max. So um, for me, that would be the ones I would recommend. And I love Tex Max. They're amazing. And Texas, spe Texas Specials as well. Tex Max, Tex Texas Specials, either one of them, you can't really go wrong. Uh, they're mega, definitely mega. So, uh, so yes, I'd recommend either one of those. So, um, so, yeah. Did that feel really quick? Was that a quick answer, people, with the tube? Felt like it. Um, anyway, I'm going to move on to question two now. So I've answered this question. Moving on to question two. Uh, what's your experience with the Line 6 DL4? Uh, really good. Uh, I still have one. Uh, my first ever DL4 bust. Uh, it does stop. Well, I went to turn it on one day, and it just didn't turn on anymore. Sadly, which is a big shame. Excuse me, I'm gonna yawn. <sighs> this is why I don't do videos at night. Um, but yeah, so the DL4, I mean, is great. It's an amazing pedal. Personally, though, if you want the DL4, I would just buy the Line 6 HX now instead of buying just the DL4 because the Line 6 HX effects just has it all in there. Like say, I mean, uh, on my line six, uh, my my bottom row, my HX effects, the bottom three switches, are the same delays I have in my DL4. I don't, I don't actually use my DL4 anymore. Actually, it's kind of, um, it's just in a box. I don't really use it uh, because let's say the HX took its place, but I don't want to get rid of it because you know it's one of those pedals that I just don't want to lose. You know, they're they're really really awesome regardless of the fact that, and it's got a looper in it as well, which is really really cool. But, I mean, I, I think a DL4 is great. I say, it's such a shame my first one died. Uh, I was going to look into getting it fixed, but it was just going to be way too expensive and pointless. So, I just I actually bought my brother's off him. He wasn't using his, so I bought his. Uh, and they're definitely worth a buy. They really are. But, the HX is more worth it, in my opinion. Because not only do you get all the delays, you get all the other effects as well. Phases, distortions, choruses, univibes, blah, 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 blah. All that lot in there as well so it's kind of like the master of all really i still i'm still stand behind the hx as a pedalboard killer because it really is i mean um it's just one of those pedals that like i could go to a gig with that and a wah pedal and that's all i would need and I, and that is that was my setup for duke's deluda uh and it just covered everything i needed you know from a really kind of crazy some of the weirdo sounds i got to the just straight out kind of like rocky kind of tones and stuff like that it, it just it just covered all bases and you know it's about this big you know and you're not fighting for floor space it's great so um so yeah so i mean i would just say like you know if you're after a dl4 if you really want a dl4 go for it you won't regret it but i like, i would say it's worth it definitely to go an extra bit you know a little bit further and just get the hx because it's just mega i just love that thing it's so cool but, uh, but yeah, so um, that's that's what I would say. But my experience with the DL4 was always good, you know, apart from when it died. But, you know, up to that point, it was bulletproof. And the one I've got now, you know, touch wood, um, there's wood, uh, is, you know, it's still going and I still love it. And I, I did use it 
uh, up until I got the HX, really. I mean, the HX kind of just took its, pa- its space, really, because it had that and more. You know, because I could only ever program three delays, and that's all I could have on that one. Whereas with the HX effects, I've got the three delays, and also I've got three other effects on top of that. So it's cool. Uh, I love the HX. I stop I'm gushing about the HX effects. Are but anyway. Uh, but yeah, my my experience with the Line Six DL4 was very very favorable. In all fairness, I had quite a few of those uh, Line Six pedals. I had. I still obviously got the DL4, and I sold two others, which I didn't want to sell, but needed the money at the time, and 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 uh, I, I sold them. Uh, one was the Distortion Modeler. It's a gold pedal. Uh, I forget what exactly what the thing is, but it's, it's called the Distortion Modeler, and it's gold, and it's absolutely amazing. And that one was that was one of those pedals. I was like, oh, do I really don't want to sell it. It's so good. It's so good, but I needed money, so it had to go. Uh, and the other one was the blue one, which I think is a modulation pedal it's got choruses and uni vibes in it uh it's not the purple one which is kind of like the synthy one it's the blue one and i had those three and in all fairness those three put them together you've got a mega pedal board but now you have the, the line 6 hx which has all that combined in just a nice little neat little package uh i don't know why i said it like that but i did but yeah so in all my in my uh if it was up to me i would just get the hx but uh, I understand that like the HX is a little bit more expensive. You know, it's about I would say it's probably about two hundred and something odd quid more than the uh, DL, but you're just getting more. You know what I mean? That, that, and like I say, the HX is one of those things. Now, if my HX died, I would buy another HX. If my DL four dies, I won't be buying another one. I'll just buy the, the HX because it's got it all and more. So, um, so if that makes any sense whatsoever. But no, like I say, but my experience with DL4 was it was bulletproof. It worked flawlessly for years until it didn't. And then I got another one and that works and it's just great. Uh, so if you want to go that route, do it. You know, I mean, I can't not recommend it. But like I say, for me personally, if I was to do it, I would just go for the HX effects. But they are amazing pedals. There's a reason that a lot of people use the DL4 and have used the DL4 for years. You know, um, I've seen Miles Kennedy has it. John Shanty obviously has it. I've seen it in the rack units. Uh, Slash has the rack unit. I've seen it so many times in rack units. Um, you know, they're just those wicked, wicked things. And, you know, yeah, they look cool as well. Big green pedal. So cool. They look like little spaceships, I think. They look really cool. Anyway, uh, so yeah. Anyway, I hope that's actually a question. Uh, moving on to question three. So question three today is... I'm going to move that LCD screen. Um... What budget pedals do you recommend to get the get a Rory Gallagher, Jimi Hendrix, and John Fashanti tone? So budget pedals, you're looking at Tone City for this. Uh, tone City, Golden Plexi, to- Tone City, Black T. Uh, there's also the Noisy Boy, uh, the Green Tube. The Green Tube and the Noisy Boy do it really well, but I say all those four do it. They're like the four that I would recommend if you're on a budget because they're the cheapest. You know, the the, the, gold, the Golden Plexi and the Black T, awesome pedals. Love those. They're my two favorite distortion pedals that Tone City do. Uh, and then there's the Noisy Boy, which is kind of like my third favorite. It's cool. I love it, but it's not as good as the Golden Plexi or the, the Black T. And then there's obviously the the, uh, the Green Tube. And the Green Tube is actually a really, really awesome pedal to use uh, to get your John Fashanti cleanish broken up dirty tone you know your broke your dirty clean tone so to say um the green tube's great for that it really does it and it's very ds2 friendly and ivan as friendly as well the green tube is because i was a bit worried about the green tube when i first played it. i was like oh it's just gonna be a knockoff of a tube screamer and i don't really like tube screamers i think it's because i've got so much mid in my sound from the get-go when i turn it on it doesn't do anything so, but the green tube wasn't that. It was something totally different and awesome. And I love it. Uh, it's a great, great pedal. So, that would be the four that I'd recommend. If you're on a budget and you want Rory Gallagher, uh, Gallagher Jimi Hendrix, and John Frusciante, those are the four pedals I would recommend for them. Because, like I say, with the Golden Plexi and the green tube, you can get John's Dirty, uh, dirty Clean. With uh, the Golden Plexi, uh, you can get kind of Jimi Hendrix's kind of like well, what kind of classes is Jimmy's clean tone? It's not really clean. It's very distorted. Um, and then kind of if you com- start combining these, you get stuff like uh, Rory Gallagher and Jimi Hendrix kind of lead tones and, and John Shanty lead tones. 
So, so that, that would be the four that I'd recommend, if, especially if you're on a budget. You know, those rule the roost. They really do. Um, if I was going to go away from individual pedals, I'd recommend something like the, the Zoom G5N multi-effects unit, because that thing's mega. Um, that's a budget, you know, that, that's fairly budget multi-effects unit. It's absolutely amazing. Sounds great. Easy to program. Does have stupid scroll functions. But the really cool thing is if you wanted Jimmy, John and, and Rory, you could set up three individual patches for each individual one. I've done that on the one I've got. And it's just really, really cool uh, to do that. I'm actually, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I did with mine. And it was just, it's just, it just works that way. It's just, it's a great pedal. So if you want to go to multi-effects route, G5M by Zoom. If you don't want to go to multi-effects route and get single pedals, like I say, those four Tone City pedals I mentioned, they'll do the job. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy um absolutely amazing you know tone city stuff is so cool i love it to bits i really do i mean i remember the first time i heard the golden plexi i was just like need that and got it had to get it and then like being sent them and, and the new ones as well it's just like oh need a tone city wire pedal though we need a tone city wire pedal we also need a tone city um delay pedal that isn't analog like a digital like tone city delay pedal that'd be great uh, but mega pedals, mega pedals. But I would really recommend them. I really would. They're they're so cool. They're so cool. So uh, so that would be the four I'd recommend. So yeah, hope that uh, answers your question. Uh, going to move on to the final question today, everybody. Question four. So question four today is what was your what was your first live experience like? Uh, I think I've spoke about this before, but I I, I like to speak about this because I think it's cool. Uh, for not in, I I enjoy it because I get to revisit it. But I think it's cool for like to just talk about it, you know, in general. And and if you've never played live, I think it, I think it's it's kind of like a cool thing to hear. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being stupid. I don't know. My brain just going mental. Brain, Davis, it's the stupidest sentence you've ever said in your life. But I I like it because I kind of get to kind of like revisit it. Anyway, my first live experience. What was it like? Utterly terrifying, but at the same time absolutely beyond exciting and awesome i loved every second of it it was so cool uh i was terrified you know utterly terrified um but it was so cool and it was just ace and it just it was one of those things of like you know i want to do this the rest of my life you know i want to it really was it was kind of like one of those things there was there was a few points in my life where i've gone i just want to do this the rest of my life i just want to perform music i want to play music i want to play guitar and that's all i want to do uh Hmm. Did the same thing. Did that last week. Why are you doing that again? Camera just says memory card's full when it's not. Bizarro. I don't know why it's doing that. It better not start to become a... Well, like I say, I might have to buy a new camera soon. People have achieved this one's acting the goat, unfortunately. I've updated it, but I've, it, I don't know. It, it's. But saying that, it's been pretty much like used every day for like... I don't know when I got this camera, but it's been used every day. So it's 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 had a, you know, it's had a good innings i might buy another one and just put this in reserve but i can't afford to buy a new one right now but i will at some point but anyway um where was i yeah first live experience yeah absolutely terrifying you know absolutely terrifying but i was so excited to do it my, my first live experience i only played like two songs live and one was book rogers by feeder and the other was by the way by the chili peppers and um i remember going to the gig it was somebody's party and uh, I remember going to the gig with my Washburn Maverick series guitar, my PV Rage amp, and that's all I had. And um, no pedals. And uh, thinking that would be it. Um, and the guy who was there, there was another band on <laughs> before. We were supposed to... We were going to play last, which didn't add any pressure at all. We were going to play last. Uh, me and my two other friends were going to play last. And... Uh, the guy who was on stage in the last, the, the second last band, sorry, was um, was saying you can't use that. It's not you're not. No one's going to hear that amp on stage. I had no idea that the P V Rage wasn't big enough. You know, I, I didn't know. No one told me. Um, it seemed loud enough at the time, fifteen watts and all that. But um, the guy said, "Oh, you can't use that." He says, "You'll never hear it." He says, "You can use my Marshall though." And I'd heard of Marshall amps, but I didn't know anything about them. I didn't know anything about sound either or anything like that. Anyway, so I went up on the stage and he had a free channel Marshall TSL. And I was just like, what do I do? And he goes, oh, that's the foot switch. And the TSL foot switch is like this big, you know. And I was just like, okay. And I remember just kind of like going, just pretend you know what you're doing. So 
I was up there on the stage kind of twiddling his amp. I had no idea what, what I was doing. It must have sounded terrible. I had no clue. But I got a sound out of it. And uh, we basically played the two songs very, very badly. Uh, and I, I remember keeping my head down for the entire time. It was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Because uh, I was terrified. But it was great. I loved it. And then my second live experience was like a proper, proper gig kind of thing. And that was mega. That was just so cool. And I just love it. I love playing live. I do find it. I do get nervous. I get very nervous before a gig. I get kind of nervous throughout the gig. You know, in, in the words of Devin Townsend, what I do is just go up there and panic. You know, it's it's calm panic. You know, and then have a bit of a crisis on stage because I start to get hate myself because I'm not playing well enough. And that's happened a lot. There's been many a times... Um, in live gigs in the past where I've got re that angry at myself, I start swearing at myself on stage really loudly, actually, to a point where people could hear me and they start to worry about me because I'm going, you, mm, Dave, having a real go at myself because I get really nasty at myself. Um, but I think it's quite amusing for people to be watching me kind of having a bit of a crisis on stage. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just terrifying. I don't know. But I love playing live and I can't wait to play live again. I miss it horrifically, absolutely horrifically. It's one of those things that I just really enjoy more than anything else, like playing live, playing in front of people, especially when people are listening. It's hard work when people don't pay attention to you to do a gig. You know, when, when people just don't give a monkeys about you, plenty of those, plenty of those gigs I've played, uh, where people just don't care. Um, it's tough to do those kind of gigs because you just kind of like you start to question why you're there you know why why are they there you know what what's the deal you know it's it's very it's heartbreaking to be perfectly honest with you know, people with you and i've had plenty of gigs like that where you play to no one and um you know no one's no one really cares uh and such such is the way though you know the level i'm at the pub level i'm at you know it's it, it's it's hard work you know because most of the people in the pub sometimes aren't there to well 99 percent of the time the people in the pub you get to play at aren't there to see you and don't care about you and don't even want you there in the first place so most of the time you kind of have to try and win them over and when you're playing stuff like Jimi Hendrix and Roy Gallagher and Joe Bonamassa and big guitar solos people don't want to hear that you know they want to hear Summer of 69 or or something else you know they don't want to hear what you're playing they don't want to hear that kind of music you know they don't like that kind of music so you know they want to they're not interested, so you 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 know you've lost before you wit you start in that battle. But uh, tough, tough. It's very tough when you're in that situation. It really is. It's it's, it's soul destroying. To be fair, with you people who cheat, it really is. But it doesn't ever kind of like knock me off the path of what I perform perform live. I'd love it. You know, even with all the the negativity I've had in 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 my time as a as a musician like playing live and stuff it, it ne I, i've never gone i'm never doing this again you know um you know it, there's always that kind of like you know i can't not do this there have been times where i just want to quit but i'm like i can't i can't i love it too much you know so there are times like that but i've never not wanted to do it you know what i mean i remember doing I've, I've done gigs in all states as well i remember doing one gig with dukes deluda where um I had, a, I had a sickness bug and the night before the gig well the entire day before the gig I felt absolutely horrific and then I was throwing up all night just like horrifically just kind of like couldn't stop it and the next day I was just kind of like you know I was sleep deprived I was like weak as I, I was like oh I couldn't eat anything because my stomach was all messed up I was like, oh god, and but I still went and did a gig. <laughs> I had to sit down, but I did the gig nonetheless. And um, there's been there's been gigs where I've had like you know the the worst kind of like cold, and there's been gigs where I've had no voice and I've had to sing. There's gigs where I feel rotten, where I've had like you know arguments and fallouts and all sorts of horrible stuff go on. But I will always go and do a gig. Uh, you know, I've had injuries where I've had to kind of like sit down on 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 chairs and stuff like that and be carried around with stuff like that I've, I've done gigs where i've exhausted myself to the point where i'm at the point of throwing up because i'm that exhausted i'm just like Ugh. you start dry retching start dry dry heaving because i've pushed it so far i've done all that but it's so cool it doesn't you know it's stuff like that where i feel like you know yeah you've 
you've you've worked for it. If you know, if you're at that point where you're that exhausted and you've worked for it, you know, you've you've given it all you can, you know, at that point. If you're on the verge of vomiting, you know, I think you I think you've done something right there. Even if people don't care, which sometimes they don't, um, at least you've done yourself proud. You know, what I mean, you know, at least you've done something for yourself. You've pushed yourself, even though there's nothing coming back. You know, and I think I think that's important to do. It's always about pushing yourself to your limit. I think, especially live performance. Live performance is not about sitting back and taking it easy. It's live performance is, you know, you you absolutely push yourself to your ragged edge every time you go out and perform live. You know, even if you don't feel like it, you push and you push and then you push even more than that to try and get that extra percentage into your performance. You know, and and you just give it all you've got. You know. Um, you know, you might feel like you've been hit by a, tr- a truck the next day, but that, that means that's good, in my opinion. Again, I don't, I don't think everybody thinks that way, but I do. I, I think I, I like that personally. But, but yeah, so anyway, but I love playing live. From my first live experience, that was terrifying, utterly terrifying, and it will be terrifying. Yeah, you know, I still get nervous for gigs now. You know, whenever, whenever, whenever I do a gig, I'm, I'm nervous and I'm a bit kind of, oh God, you know, because um, you do. I mean, that's normal. That's normal. You know, you know, there's so many things that can go wrong in a gig. There's so many variables. You know, it'd be silly not to be a bit nervous about something. You know, um, so yeah, I, 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 I like nerves anyway. I think they keep you um, keep you sharp and keep you focused. If you you know, I, I have done gigs before where I wasn't nervous, um, mainly because the band I was in, I didn't, I wasn't enjoying where I was, and it was boring. For me, I, 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 I've had it a few times with a, with a couple of different bands where I'm just, I'm not looking forward to this gig, so I'm not nervous about it. I just don't want to do it because of uh, it could be the people I'm playing with or what I'm playing in general. It just doesn't do anything for me, so I, I struggle with that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, so but I mean, there, have, there have been times like that in the past where I'm just kind of like, mm, don't want to do this, and then you're just not excited for it at all. So it just becomes a, like a drain more than anything. So anyway, um, but yeah, but that was my first live experience thing anyway, uh, but really, really cool. Anyway, who would you be here? Uh, I hope I made some kind of sense anyway. But anyway, uh, yeah, hope I've answered your questions okay. Uh, feels like a really quick Q&A. Oh. That was my dad uh, turning the light off on me. Interesting. Anyway. Like I say, I hope I've answered your questions okay, people with YouTube. Uh, if you want to submit a question for A&Q Wednesday, put the uh, a, a description box below. Sorry, my brain's gone because of the light. I'm terrified of it going out again. Uh, like, stop turning the lights off, I'm busy. Uh, anyway, yeah, if you want to submit a question for Q&A Wednesday, people with YouTube, uh, description box below has a email link. Email me there and I'll get to it. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this Q&A Wednesday at... Uh, nearly nine o'clock at night and um yeah i will see you again uh, on friday for another vid have a great morning afternoon good evening and goodbye now people thank you very much indeed for watching and i'll have a salute why are you salute i'm not salute. we're not in the army david